Thank you for coming back to another Tony Montana video. This time we're going to be talking about um, addressing an issue that a person encountered with their rescue dog. Uh, they said it was uh, some sort of pit bull type dogs. So we are going to address it as such. Please, but first of and foremost, please say hello to my little friend, Capi. He is the uh, sire of my pups that are now uh, about a, a little over a year and a half. Um, he is uh, still the best, um, not the best, but a, a good example of the breed. Uh, obviously, like any other uh, living being, has a pluses and minuses, flaws and um, attributes. You know, so uh, here we are. And hello. He says, uh, my cat, Meow. He he likes to uh, do special appearances once in a while. Right, Meow? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, anyway, we are going to talk about this uh, particular person. I'm going to try my best not to make my comments uh, while I'm, I'm giving you the explanation that the person gave in regards to her situation. Okay, let's start. Basically, the person um, was not uh, is not a knowledgeable person in dogs, and but wanted to rescue a dog, and so they went and acquired an adult dog that eventually she found out that had been living in the streets for quite some time. So they rescue uh, that dog from the streets. So um, they that particular person took that uh, dog to their house. And the dog seemed very loving, very affectionate, but had some sort of um, um, social issues. Uh, one of the social issues, or two of the social issues that he, the dog had, was that when he was sleeping and someone was passing by the dog, or wanted to move the dog while the dog was sleeping or laying, the dog, uh, the dog would growl, it would, grrr, would give it medium type growl. Um, and, and also, they did the same thing when they were eating. They gave a medium growl. Uh, whenever someone would come close to him you know, while, while he was eating. So uh, that was a, a, a problem that the person did not address. They just continue on with the dog this way. Uh, in one occasion, the dog at the, in the middle of the night, according to the person, Someone in the middle of the night uh, decided, decided to get up from their bed and go into the person's uh, bedroom. They got up on the bed and started being very amorous towards the person. And they went on to sleep. Later on in the night, something I'm, I'm assuming somebody, someone was, move, was moving or getting comfortable or wanted the dog to, you know, basically move away from, you know, maybe was taking hogging the whole bed, and and so the person, you know, that detail is in an assumption because it wasn't giving, and the dog gave us a, a very low growl, mm. or something to that effect, and then uh, I guess the person did not heed or did not react properly to that, and continued to do whatever, ignited that, mm. and so. The dog apparently bit her. The person said this doesn't doesn't recall the bite, only recalls getting up and and then saying, "Get out of the room, out of the room." And so after that, the dog was uh, given away. Now, now that uh, when I hear that story, I do not hear at human aggression. I do not hear that, knowing how dogs. Are and knowing the background of the dog, I can understand why he did it and acknowledge that the dog actually was a people-friendly animal. But why did he bite? Well, in dog terms, he did not bite. To you as a human, if anything, mouthing would be deemed a bite. Uh, most, most things would be deemed a bite. But for, for animals, Remember that we have hands. Dogs do not have hands. So for they, the dog uses their mouth as we use our hands. So that means that the dog has to do 
give you know indicators do a lot of things with their mouth when, when we would normally do it with our hands and uh they also while while some dogs i feel like you're using your mouth mouth when you're actually using your hand one example when you grab a dog like this like this or you grab them when you grab them like this for them it, it will be deemed the same as if you I was using my mouth because that they equate that, you know, sometimes that's why I do, when I caress them, I do this. Okay. I, even my enemies, one of the people that talk bad about me, you could use this. They prefer this over this. This is human. This is human. This is animal. What do you think they look like? All right. So anyway, so you have to really understand animals. You have to really understand uh, that dog that you have in your hand and work with them accordingly. This person should have uh, realized that because the dog is uh, was living outside, one, maybe the dog was born outside from dogs that were kicked out of someone's house, you know, or they were kicked out of the house very early or it was a very long time ago. So this means that uh, a lot of the social learning that he may have had went away, or he went way back in the back of the head, uh, brain, and the, uh, now now he acts according to how he was living outside. How was he living outside? He was living and surviving on, on its own. Had to uh, find food, not just find it, but protect it, make sure that no one, other, no other dog would try to take it. And he would have to find shelter, and not just find shelter, Make sure that no one took his shelter or or even more. Find animals and dogs that have food and take that food from them to eat. Uh, and finding shelter and even taking that shelter from other animals or dogs. And that meant being, using aggression, level, different levels of aggression to get that, whatever they wanted. So I'm um, not sure how big the dog is, but obviously the smaller the dog was, and probably more aggressive they had to be to, to get and maintain everything they had out there. One of the uh, things, I mentioned that the dog, the lady person said that the dog bit her face, their face. So uh, you, obviously I did not hear hospital, I did not hear or read anything about stitches. So... This leads me strongly to believe, especially the growl, level of growling and what was happening in the moment. The dog was just being kind of like nudging, like, leave me alone, type of thing. Kind of like, hey, cut it out. Leave me. Leave me alone. You know, something to that effect in, to, uh, uh, to the person so that they, uh, well, they would maintain whatever space they had at the moment. Um, again, I, I always, this is some of the things I'm, for a dog like this, I'm, and I guess I'm, uh, I'm explaining this, but I'm not telling you what to do. I'm going to basically tell you if you get a dog or if you have a dog with a brand new dog or you don't know who handled it or you're having an issue with the dog, start from scratch. Start, keep keep a collar on the dog and keep a leash on the dog. A rope will be better because obviously you don't want to hear it. Uh, the noise when the dog goes, um, you know, walks around. If eventually once you let go of the, of the leash, but at the moment, in the first, at the beginning, you will have to make the dog understand that there has to be a connection between the, itself and the human or humans. They it has he has to remember, or re, uh, learn, or remember that people guide their uh, the dog's life. The dog doesn't guide itself through life because this might be just a new territory same but it, so to them they're still in the streets it just happened to look like this indoors so do you have to teach them that now i'm i'm guiding you you look for me for guidance and we have to find a connection or the family with the dog connection so uh leash is important uh never let go of the leash of the dog if you don't want to hold it you have somebody else hold them to walk around the house but at the beginning, for the dog to understand that, uh, when you lay on the sofa, make, him, make sure he lays on the sofa, on the, on the floor first, 
because again, you, go, you have to teach them limits and then waiting for uh, rewards from the humans. So uh, you know, on the floor, uh, when you make sure you have a nice, comfortable bed for the dog and maybe tie it to a, a furniture, piece of furniture, so that way the, the dog isn't able to move away from its bed because you're, it's not allowed, you're teaching it to stay there because that's what you want them to do. Uh, and then again, teaching them limits. You're not gonna do this forever. You're doing it for the now, so the dog and you get a connection, the dog brain sparks to understand that this is a different lifestyle and different social behavior needs to be uh, um, you know, learned or remembered. So uh, you once you're uh, you also should if you have a crate you should t teach it to to go in the crate. Uh, there's many ways of the dog. A lot of dogs have that den mentality. So you could put that uh, bed inside the crate for for the time being. You know I don't know depending on how big it is. Uh, you might want to keep it there so that the dog enjoys it. And then when you have toys, you make sure that you give the toy and take the toys away at whenever you want it might be for what maybe if your dog is very uh very aggressive towards that you give it to him and you take it away right away and that way it, and then you give it and you take it right away that way the dog connects it also if the dog is uh, food aggressive you stop feeding him from a bowl start feeding with your uh, on your hand put it in uh, on your hand and feed him that way and and that way, little by little, the dog will understand that you are the one that controls its life and it shouldn't be act aggressive towards you because that is not the way. It should learn to be patient. It should learn to be, you know, uh, attentive to you and your family and do not show aggression because that is not allowed in a human environment. And I could continue on this, but I wanted to just give you an understanding of uh, dog mentality versus human mentality, how one person can see a dog attack while another like myself sees that as an opportunity to train a social dog, a dog that is seeking to be with humans, to act, to, uh, to understand human behavior, human uh, accepting, uh, yeah, basically human acceptance in, in terms of how they act towards them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Tony Montana. Until next time.